Hello, well today's little waffle is about welding and cutting um, steels and here we have a an oxygen bottle standing in the corner of my workshop. Nowadays there's all sorts of modern methods, TIG, MIG, plasma cutting, water jetting, there's all sorts of things. But this wasn't available when I was uh, younger. And I still like the old um, oxyacetylene flame for doing some jobs. In fact, in, in some jobs, it's, uh, it can't be beaten. Um, I haven't got uh, acetylene here. We have to hire the cylinders, and, uh, but you can buy propane outright. So I'm using oxypropane. Um, don't mess with this sort of equipment. If you haven't used it before or don't know what you're doing, uh, get professional instruction. Uh, if you get this wrong, it takes no prisoners, so you'll have to take my word for that. And also check that all your equipment is in good order. Check all the hoses aren't perished, all the fittings are tight. Use a paintbrush with, a, with some uh, soapy water and paint all the fittings. You'll soon see if you've got any leaks. Well this is a standard blowtorch with a blowpipe. You can get different sizes of these. Um, there's our gas and our oxygen valves. Here we have two flashback arresters. That's especially important when we're actually cutting metal. And um, we apply gas first, just a little, light the end. That's just gas on its own. That's acetylene. Um, I beg your pardon, that's propane. Propane is not as hot as acetylene, but it's all I have here. And then we slowly apply oxygen to this. And you'll see the colour change. And in the centre, I don't know how well this, this uh, is picked up on my on my camera. I haven't got enough uh, air pressure. Let me just adjust this. There you go. That should work. Let's apply uh, oxygen. And there, no, I don't think the camera's going to show it. But if it, if it did show it well, you'd find there's a little feather in the middle there. And it is the tip of that little feather that's the hottest part of the flame. If that little feather is extended by reducing the amount of oxygen, like so, you might be able to just see it, that's a carburising flame. Um, there is insufficient oxygen to, get, to give us complete combustion of the two gases. If I apply more oxygen, that's an oxidising flame. There is more oxygen than gas to complete the combustion. I tend to use slightly oxidising flame for brazing, silver soldering. I'll use a neutral flame for just for heating something up. And I'll use a carburising flame if I want to uh, case harden a tool I've made, as it will impart some case into the, into the surface of the metal. OK, well that's, that's a simple uh, explanation of the blowtorch. Okay, well, let's assume for the purpose of this uh, little demonstration that I want to attach that piece of metal to that one, and we wish to braze them. Um, so we start off by cleaning the surfaces. Um, we don't want no grease. It's essential to be very clean. If you want to go to the nth degree, you could use carbon tech when you finish cleaning them up. And we need a means of... Um, of holding them together, we can wire the thing together, position it with weights and clamps, and then we'll apply the flame. Well, here I'm using a slightly oxidising flame, and I suspect my camera doesn't like this bright light. So just bear with me for a moment, please. We get both parts equally as hot. We have flux on the end of our brazing rod. This work 
the brass around. Down the rear. And that should do. And we'll let that cool down, obviously. Well, here the joint is cooled down. We didn't actually need that amount of brass, but uh, my eyesight is not as good as it used to be. But um, there's still need for some of the old ways, and this will have a certain amount of give, where perhaps MIG welding, TIG, wouldn't. This will yield. This is why motorcycle frames and bicycle frames are often brazed together. Here we have a standard oxyacetylene cutting torch. Um, we have the same controls and we also have the amount of air pressure to do the actual cutting. Um, the fittings are the same as our blow torch. I'll get in close. They're marked oxyacetylene, but you can't put them on the wrong way around. Um, oxygen is always a standard thread, but any gas is a left-handed thread, so they can't be put on wrong, and you can always spot this immediately by the little nicks in, in the nut. Whenever you see nicks like that, it's a gas thread, and they go the opposite way. We start the cutting torch with acetylene to start with, or propane in my case. Um, then we slowly add oxygen And here I think it probably shows the feathers. There's several of them here. Um, six or seven in the head. That's about a neutral flame. And that's applying oxygen to do the cutting. Uh, something I may have not have mentioned with the brazing, you can uh, mix up a paste of, of uh, flux for clean brazing, but a little trick I use is to heat the uh, the brazing rod, like so, you just dip it in the paste and you'll see that uh, uh, the, the flux is adhered to the end of the brazing rod. I actually got it a bit too hot there as the end fell off, but you got the idea. Um, it was at this point I would like to have shown you actually cutting metal. But the camera colour correction just won't allow this, so I'll have to do it um, pencil and paper fashion. So bear with me. OK, good old paper and pencil. <laughs> or felt tip in this case. Um, OK, let's assume this is a piece of metal we want to cut. We want to cut it across there, say. Um, we apply our cutting torch and preheated at the end, at the edge, at the edge of the metal. Just won't turn that round, just there. And uh, we want the, the little feather pieces to just circle that end, okay? So that this little area here gets the hottest of all, that, that mark there. So our flame is being applied here. Um, and as soon as we've got this bright red, um, we slowly apply oxygen, it's the additional pressure of the oxygen that blows that molten metal away and then we proceed in the direction of the cup we want to go. If we, if we go uh, too quickly forward, we wouldn't have preheated the metal up sufficiently to produce the cut and our cut will, will stop. If we are too slow, uh, we'd have blown that little piece of molten metal away and uh, the, right, the remainder, this edge, this side, would still be relatively cold. So it's a question of timing and that only comes with, with practice. Uh, we always start on the edge. Um, this will stop uh, molten metal being blown at you if you try to cut in the middle. If we require a hole to be cut there, then the, the trick for that is to drill a small hole and then treat that small hole as we did our edge here and proceed round and cutting. 
Um, it's a long way of describing this, I suppose, or, or, or long-winded, I meant to say. Um, but it's it's once you've done it and you've learnt the technique, it's relatively uh, relatively simple. But you must observe all safety precautions when cutting metal because you are actually blowing molten metal uh, in the gap of the cut, and this goes usually downwards. And you could be merrily watching what you're doing here, and you've just set fire to your carpet or something. <laughs> so um, safety first, always, eh? Okay, well, just to sum up then, I've very briefly touched on the subject of oxyacetylene use. It's a big subject, and uh, if you intend to pursue it, then do some reading up on it. It's um, far more involved than I've just briefly described. So I hope it's given you a little bit of an insight in some of the techniques that I use. Thanks for watching.